What does pray without ceasing look like when you're a mom? Today we sit down with Jackie Francois Angel to talk about encountering God's grace in the day to day. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to Life Beyond the Chariot, a faith and family series from the St. Philip Institute. We believe we are called to not only know, but also to live the truth of the gospel within our homes, in our workplaces, and beyond. We believe we are invited to encounter Christ in the messiness of day-to-day life and to live as his disciples. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, We are really excited uh, because we have a special guest with us uh, this week, um, Jackie Angel. Some of you may be familiar with Jackie from the Ascension Presents videos. But Jackie, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me, you guys. It's exciting to be here and get three moms talking. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be really good. So Jackie, will you tell us a little bit about yourself before we dive in? Yeah, yeah. So my name is Jackie Francois Angel. I now live in Dallas, Texas and work for the Word on Fire Institute as a fellow for marriage and family life. But um, that is a recent thing. I'm originally from Orange County, California my whole life and um, uh, have been involved with youth ministry ever since I had my conversion at 18 and kind of like a deeper conversion of my Catholic faith. I was raised Catholic, but not a very good Catholic. So, <laughs> um, and since then I've been involved with youth ministry, have been traveling and speaking and um, I'm a singer songwriter. So leading worship as well. Um, but yeah, so I've been doing that since 2007 and married my lovely husband, Bobby Angel in 2013. And we've done ministry together, speaking uh, about theology of the body and different things, discernment. And we have four lovely children, six and under, and they are nuts. And- <laughs> <laughs> nice. I think I was telling you before, my husband and I got married shortly after you guys did. And it seems like every time you have a baby, we have a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty close. So I totally understand the, uh, the chaos of six <laughs> and under. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Bobby, when, when he, he goes to the office, he's like, to survive okay and then I'm like <laughs> survive like you just you kind of like just make sure they're alive when I come back and there you go oh man yeah yeah awesome well thank you so much again for for being with us and we're gonna talk today about constant prayer we've been going through the Marian virtues and this whole idea of of constant prayer and Mickey maybe you can can define that a little bit better just always being in the mindset of being in the presence of God, that basically there should be no time in our day where it is wasted on things that aren't from above, which is really difficult. And I feel like I was way better at it when I was in college. Um, went to college on a monastery. They had monks on campus and we could join them for prayer. And I was not distracted. If I wanted to go to the chapel, I could just go. <laughs> I didn't have to pack a diaper bag or get anything ready. And, and I, if I wanted to read my Bible, I could just do that. And so I feel like it has become more challenging as a mom to be in that state of uniting everything with God and just being in the presence of God. Not that I have to be doing vocal prayer 24 seven, but just being in that state of God's presence. And that's been a challenge for me. And I feel more so now as a mom. Uh, yeah. So I'm a work in progress. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah. I, I, you know, I remember reading a mother Teresa. I don't remember if it was like a quote from mother Teresa. I think I had this little book that was like all these quotes from mother Teresa. And, um, she was reflecting on, I think it's first Thessalonians five seventeen. It says, St. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Mm-hmm. And you're like, how do you pray without ceasing? Like you're constantly praying. And mother Teresa said, you know, often when we hear that scripture verse, we think like, oh, well, you have to constantly be on your knees or, you know, how, how can you do this unless you were a monk or a, you know, or like a nun, you were like in this (laughs) convent and you're just always praying. And she said, but everything we do, every thought, every conversation, every, every word is glorifying God. That's what it means to pray without ceasing. So she's, she basically was like, so when you're folding laundry, that's praying without ceasing. That's a prayer to God because you're loving your family again. Like, and I, I <laughs> love being a mom. I hate housework. Okay. I hate housework. Same. So, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So I 
I'm not, uh, okay, laundry, like, <laughs> I can do laundry, it takes me about three weeks to put it away, um, so, <laughs> you know, like, I, that meme spoke to me when I saw that, it was like, yes, I feel that deep in my heart, but, you know, even, like, doing laundry, or, like, um, cooking, or just all these, like, like, sweeping, I'm not necessarily a fan of eating those things, but Mama Teresa just saying, like, e even those small things, or changing poopy diapers all day, like, that is an act of love, and so that is a prayer to God, that glorifies God, and so when she said that, I just, I was like, ah, okay, so every conversation that glorifies God, that's a prayer, that's praying without ceasing, and um, actually, you guys talking about uh, the Marian, you know, the Marian dimension, um, I, Bobby and I are consecrated to Our Lady. And then I actually just did the Divine Mercy consecration. I think it's Father Donald Calloway wrote the, yeah. right. And that was, that's like through the little way of St. Therese, who Mother Teresa took her name, Teresa, mm -hmm. Therese from St. Therese, the little way. And St. Therese was all about, right, doing small things with great love. And M Mother Teresa, that was her whole thing, doing small things with great love. And St. Therese in this Divine Mercy consecration, um, the, the whole thing was every in everything, praise and thanksgiving, praise and thanksgiving. And that just was like, yes, that's exactly in everything, praise and thanksgiving. So when I find myself in those times that it's like, I'm super, you know, just complaining or annoyed, I just have to like really just stop for a second and be like, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Like, thank you, Lord. Because tomorrow it could all go to heck. <laughs> I really just don't know. Yeah. Like, you, it, like not even today could be your last day because it could, you know, tomorrow, you know, today could be your last day. But like tomorrow, would, it really all could go to heck and you just don't know what could happen. And um, like we are like, Jesus come back. But y'all, like, y'all don't know what kind of chaos would come with Jesus coming back. Okay. Mm, true. Um, and so just to every moment be thankful, to every moment trust in God um, and just in everything, praise and thanksgiving. That has helped me a lot <laughs> in the, especially with having little children who are constantly whining and complaining and bickering at each other and hitting each other i'm just like oh dear baby jesus have mercy on <laughs> lord baby straight right oh. amen amen no i love that because it, it helps us to have like a deeper awareness of god's presence in the day-to-day -day. because i mean laundry you, you spoke to my heart <laughs> with laundry like because it never ends and there's always mismatched socks and the frustration that comes with with all of that are just like we want to be we want to care for our families um but there are things to do and there's order that's needed and it can it can be really tempting to get so caught up in the desire for clean floors or or um things to be in a in a particular order that we can forget that there are grace-filled moments that when people aren't screaming or you know begging for snacks or, or anything and those and even those even the begging for snacks and the sticky fingers and, and all of that those are grace-filled moments too and to learn to be grateful for all of that yeah yeah and i will be the first to say that man if i could i would have a chef I would have a maid, I would have like constant, like a masseuse on like, hey, come here, you know, like, I just like, I just let me be princess. So I feel like my means of sanctification is absolutely motherhood because I do not desire to, again, be, it's a constant service. Like when, when I was just reading a reflection on when Mary said, I am the handmaid of the Lord, it's, and you're like, oh my gosh, like she literally wasn't just saying like, I'm the handmaid of God, like I'm literally going to be the handmaid like the servant of this little baby mm. and when you when you have kids you're like yes you are just constantly at the you you are serving I mean just constantly it's a constant gift of self it's a constant pouring out and but that I mean for me I just see you know a lot of people don't want to die to self because it's not fun and I'm like oh I can see how for me this little you know I'm self-centered and I just again I want to be a princess take care of me you know I can see how like, again, that's my means of sanctification is I'm constantly having to die to myself and literally getting on hands and knees and wiping up stuff off the floor. Um, and, but also again, dying to self and finding that beauty comes from being a gift. And, and again, this, the, these acts of service, mm -hmm. um, that there's so much love in that because it's humans that you love. <laughs> you know? It's for, it's, a, it's an act of love to cook when you don't want to cook and when you're baking, you know? So for me, it's, it's just, again, learning how to actually 
love because I am selfish and I feel like our culture teaches us like hey it's all about you like be selfish and and I feel like kids are like the number one way to how to die to self like (laughs) they teach us how to serve right how to love amen (laughs) yes I was it was so funny because I was watching one of your and Bobby's um videos about how kids make you holy (laughs) and he was like kids are in death and it was a small pause he's like to self (laughs) yeah Yeah. um but it's so true and I think one of the things I really try and um, I'm trying to work on because I've been a working mom ever since we've had children. This is my very first time homeschooling my kids, working part time. So I'm at home with them all day, which is a different level of presence to my children mm-hmm. and their presence to me. Like we're always around to so something. And I find myself getting more and more irritated just because it's kind of sometimes the same thing throughout the day that kind of just grates on my nerves. And I really tried, as we've been going through these Marian virtues, I really tried to be like, okay, what does it mean to be in a constant state of prayer? Like Mary was in the physical presence of Jesus. When he was little, they were always together, you know, and she's caring for him. And so um, my kids are not Jesus and I am not Mary, but just trying to think of like, uh, like what that would have been like, because I want to have that peace of soul, uh, that can exist in my home that like the presence of Jesus is always here and every morning well almost every morning when I'm on top of the game my kids and I will start off our day with like a morning offering where we thank God for everything but we also ask him for the grace for something so almost always I ask for the grace of peace because I want to just I want that to be the vibe of my home and I want my kids to experience that many times it doesn't work out and my children remind me they're like hey didn't you pray or one time my daughter said god's not giving you what you asked for and i was like what she's like you are not peaceful right now (laughs) and i said no he's absolutely offering me what i need i'm just not cooperating with that but the fact that the kids are picking that up uh was first really funny to me you're but like, also, actually, he's giving me opportunities to practice this, right. uh, yes. these things I'm praying for. <laughs> God doesn't just sprinkle it down. He's right. like, here, here are the opportunities for you to be holy. Let's see how you do. <laughs> right. And I told her, I, I looked at her, I'm like, no, God is absolutely doing what he needs to do. I'm just failing miserably. <laughs> she's, and she's very matter of fact, like she's 11. She's like, well, stop, like stop failing. I'm like, yes, I agree. <laughs> it's just really hard. Um, but that's what I try to think about. Like for Mary, what was it like to be in the constant physical presence of, of Jesus? Cause we don't have, well, we do just not in the same way. Like we can be in the presence of God and it's easier for me when I bring my kids to adoration, I'm in the presence of Jesus. And so everyone is just behaving a little bit better. And I'm wondering how I can sort of create that environment in my home. Uh, yeah, you know what, my psychology, um, I love psych, I minored in psychology and sociology, and I love, <clears throat> I, you know, I loved learning, I always love learning, like, why people are the way they are, but the psychology part of me is like, okay, you can control your actions, right, you can control your thoughts, mm. but you can't control your feelings, and for me, I was, like, d- really thinking about this years ago, um, I started, like, writing about it, and because, you know, the easiest thing to start is with your actions, mm. The, the next hardest thing is like, because especially when we go to confession, we always confess our actions, right? A lot of people, it, there's like another level when you start confessing your thoughts, like, oh yeah, I was really thinking like, you know, we mostly confess like, oh, I did this, I did this, I didn't do this. But when we start confessing our thoughts, like, oh, I was thinking this about that person, you know, like I was hating on them in my brain. <laughs> but I really thought like St. Therese, she even in her feelings was like so grace filled. And I think about Mary, you know, obviously Mary was full of grace. So even her in her feelings, um, I mean, for me, I was thinking like, it's only an act of grace. It's only by grace that even our feelings will become Mm. at some point, right? Well, that's kind of the goal that like, okay, so for my kids, when they are, uh, I can tell you as a mom, when you have to tell your kids like a hundred times, you're like, because you kind of I feel like as a mom you get annoyed because you're like I have told you this a hundred times or like you should know better right like you have that feeling like you are my child like you should know better because I've told you a million times even though you're only four you know um I 
like those feelings at some point, right, by God's grace, and I feel like it comes with some knowledge of like, okay, our kids are not rational beings, right? Like they're not rational. That part of their brain is not formed until they are rational, which is around, they're the age of reason, which are around six or seven. So basically your kids are just emotion. I told Bobby, I said, I feel like the holiness of parents is like, you're learning how to stay evenly keeled when your kids are like, mm. because they, when they're so emotional, I said, I feel like that's like the level of holiness is when your kids are throwing a tantrum, like you, I, you know, we're in, they're in a certain stage when you literally think they're demonically possessed and you have to throw holy, you're like, dude, do I need the holy water? Do the baptism stick? Like, <laughs> because I don't know if you got all of my kids have like happened upon that stage is like the melt you know the, the tantrum stage the meltdown stage the meltdown stage where you like literally think they're possessed but I you're you're trying to stay evenly killed knowing that your kids are not rational creatures um and then also to have an understanding like they just feel pure emotion so they could be in a, an extreme tantrum and you're like you want a cookie and they're like ah, okay you know <laughs> redirect so learning learning a few things like okay it's okay. You're, they're not personally attacking you by their tantrum. You know, like it's really, that's, it's a, whew, it is a grace to like, and I do not do this perfectly. Like I do it better in some cases, but like, whew, I really have had to like learn and learn and just ask for the grace of God. Cause I still get an emotional rise. Sometimes when my kids are just being defiant or they're, you know, whatever they're doing, they're, they're losing their, their ish. Um, and so it's like really by God's grace. Like I literally pray. I'm like, Oh Lord. Oh, give me your grace. Like Lord of mercy. <laughs> Please Lord. I need you. I'm like, bear me straight. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, in the, in those moments, like, again, you can control your actions. So like for me, like I can control my actions of, all right, Jackie, don't lose your ish and start yelling like crazy. Sometimes I'm like able to control my actions, my thoughts sometimes. Cause I'm thinking this kid is going nuts. Like, <laughs> I've got one of those. Oh my God. I have a, yeah, I have a redhead who, uh, who that, that girl, she is going to be a either, I always joke like she would either be the, the leader of a prison gang or she will be like the holiest mother, like abbess of a, of a convent. That's and you know what? Head, right? <laughs> Dude, she is, she says so. She's my little philosopher though. She's five. And she asks, like, what is it? What is a human? Like, she asks, like, is today? is tomorrow today? I'm like, no, today is today. Tomorrow is yesterday was tomorrow's today. You know, like I just, she asked like these, like, what is, what, like who exists? Like, does God just exist? Like, or who was before God? I'm like, you're five. Like, why are you asking these philosophical? But she does. So I think she's going to be like my little, but anyway, so when it comes to your, your actions, your thoughts and your feelings, again, you can control these two. That's why we can, we confess our actions. We don't confess our feelings. And I remember reading somewhere, that helped me a lot as a, as a mom, uh, reading somewhere. It's like, it's okay for your kids to feel and to affirm their feelings. And because I feel like probably a lot of us growing up, like our parents <laughs> did not affirm our feelings. Yep. <laughs> They're just like, stop yeah. it. <laughs> you know? And now granted there are times I'm like, I, I do want to, if I'm like, I tell my, like my one daughter, I'm like, it's okay to be sad. Like, it's okay to be sad. Now it's not okay it's okay. Like it's okay to be angry, but it's not okay to kick your brother when you're angry or to hit or push, you know? So it's like, it's okay to feel it's okay to be sad. It's okay to experience emotions, but how we respond to that, you know, we have to learn how to respond. It's like, don't punch your brother. You can go punch a pillow. That's okay. If you want to really, if you're really sad or, you know, so, um, I feel like the feelings, even for me, right. I'm not four or five. I'm not the age of reason, but man, I have to learn how to allow God's grace to, allow my feelings to just be like not so like angry and to like when my kids are going nuts like um so I feel like you know Mary was full of grace so that was grace even in her feelings and granted she had Jesus as a son so it was like <laughs> right you like he's, he's perfect my my kids are not so <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like the goal of just parent life is like again to just be evenly killed when the emotions of all these other children are like off the charts and you're, and that's really just, I feel like in those moments, you just have to ask for God's grace. Like, God, give me the grace. Like, help me, Lord, help me. <laughs> no. And I love that image of just like, of really just asking for God to, to cover us. And 
it really speaks to like we we really can't live our vocation by our own strength like it, we have to rely on god for for everything even in the the interactions with our children the day-to-day things because i feel like we when we're discerning our vocations we think like okay i just need i need the grace to discern like where does god want me to be like okay i'm going to be a wife i'm going to be a mother a priest religious sister and then we end up in those pockets but now that we're now that we're in that vocation and we're living out the sacrament, like that reminder that we know it's a daily, it it wasn't like we got all the grace we needed right at, at the, when we celebrated our wedding, it's a daily drinking in of, of God's grace. And we, we, there's no way we can raise our children without being reliant on God's help. And, and you, you said earlier, Mickey, like, When you're single, like, or for me, when I was single, I was able to go to daily mass. I could sit in adoration, like after daily mass for hours, like I could do whatever I wanted. And now as a mom, um, I can't like, there are, there are ways I've had to die to myself in even my prayer life. Mm. And so what I kind of want to say is like, your prayer life is constantly, like, I constantly have to recalibrate constantly because certain things you know, when I start realizing like, oh shoot, my prayer life is, you know, like following the waist. It's like, and Bobby and I as a married couple, you're constantly recalibrating. I feel like with every new event in your life, you're constantly saying, okay, how can we kind of write, like pray better now? Like how, what, how can we help our family pray? So we're constantly, it's not just like a once and done, like, all right, this is what we're going to do in our days. Like, cause every day is different. You never know. Um, so you know, we're constantly like, okay, how can we pray better together? How can we pray, get better, like together apart? Like what's our prayer life going to look like? But that's a constant conversation. So anyone who maybe is feeling like, like, cause I don't have it all together. I, I, you know, and I'm glad when other couples I look up to say, like, they're like, oh, you know, people think we have this amazing prayer life, but man, it's constantly, you're constantly um, trying to figure it out. You know, we don't have it all together. Constantly trying to figure it out. Um, because life throws different things that your schedule's not the same every day. Um, but it's, I don't know if you guys know who Danielle Rose is. Danielle Rose is a singer songwriter. I love her, but she was one of those as a single woman. And actually she was in a convent for a couple yeah, of years. Yeah. Um, she wrote an album called Momastery and it's like a play on monastery, but she, she realized she had this lot, like it was really hard for her who had been going to daily mass, just like I had since I was 18 to once you realize like when your kids are little and there's like right now I have kids constantly napping so there I have a kid napping in the morning and then my other kid naps in the afternoon and or like at noon and then my other kid naps right after so it's like at some point if you go out of the house you're ruining a child's nap schedule and it all hell breaks loose <laughs> so, and, and you're gonna have to do it at some points um but she was saying like it was she realized at this moment of time it was better for her to not have to take her kids to daily mass in the morning at her schedule Mm -hmm. because it was better for their schedule than hers. And she said it was really hard, you know, and it is, it's really hard when you're like, this is what I want for Mm -hmm. my prayer life. And I have to do it right now for the health, not, not like we're never going to start again, but it's like, you always have to calibrate with your kids growing up. And like, I, I do want to start taking my kids to mass daily mass. Cause I used to go to daily mass with my first two and then I was pregnant with my third and I was in such pain in that pregnancy. I literally could not lift up my two toddlers when they started running in different directions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just, I was like, Lord, I am so sorry. I can't do this right now because I'm in such pain and I'm not paying attention. Like literally I, I'm here, but I'm not here, you know, and, and I'm in such pain. I can't even do this. Um, and God, and God, guess what? God's like, I still love you. Mm your worth and your uh, is not dependent on what you do, Jackie. Like, and, and that was really hard. I, I had to really realize like, God was like, I still love you. I still love you. Mm. Like, cause I felt a lot of my worth was in going to daily mass. It was in doing things for God. And so I'm telling you, that's when the men, the mental prayer had to become like, I'm like, okay, my husband and I try to pray in the evening together. We do our Bible in a year and stuff with Father Mike. And, you know, we're trying to, when our kids go to bed and even that's kind of late, um, but still it's like, all right. And, but even my, my mental prayer game has had to get <laughs> stronger during the day of like, all right, let's take this opportunity to, <laughs> you know, to lift, like to talk to God 
Um, and I don't know how other people do that. For me, I love nature. And so um, when we look outside, I we, we just moved to a house that had like nothing in the backyard. And I'm like, I can't do that. I can't do that. I love nature and I love seeing birds. I've become the weird bird lady who knows like the bird calls. Oh, you guys, I'm so stressed. I've become, COVID turned me into a bird lady. Um, and so I got a bird feeder and the kids, we see these cardinals and I'm just like, look how beautiful this bird is. Like, look how beautiful God made these beautiful birdies. We have these like blue jays and the, these woodpeckers and these bright red. So like looking at nature and praising God and kids do that so well. Um, but even for me to like see these beautiful opportunities to praise God in his creation, you know, and, and I think even the small things like looking at your little baby's chubby thighs. And for me, I'm like, Oh Lord, thank you for these sweet baby cheeks and thighs. And, you know, um, so it, my mental prayer has had to kind of step up because I'm not able just to spend an hour in adoration every morning. Again, um, maybe that'll happen again as my kids get older, but you guys, I just want, so if anyone's feeling like, man, my prayer life has gone to, gone to poop. Like I'm saying like, listen, it is a constant recalibration of like, all right, how, what do we do today, this week? All right. And next week it might be different, you know, because maybe your kids are in a, uh, what is it? The wonder, the wonder weeks, which aren't really so wonderful, but <laughs> You call them the wonder weeks. Yep. I think you just call them this because it, you try to make us feel better about how terrible our child is being. <laughs> so yeah, recalibrate constantly. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And I think too, something that makes it difficult is when women have children, it is such, it's a beautiful interruption, right? But I think a lot of it is unexpected. Like I don't, at least for me, I don't want to speak for everyone. I think for me, it was like, oh, these things that I used to do a lot that are good, I can't do these good things in the way that I want, that I think bring glory to God. And sometimes that resulted in a loss of myself. So then it was hard for me to even figure out, oh, I see God in nature, you know? And then to be able to, to um, focus on that, you know? And so for me, it's been a lot of just more self-discovery um, as a woman when I, when I do that well, my prayer life is much better. And and I would say you you need to communicate like we as women, because I I just hear the stories of a lot of moms. I'm like, okay, communicate, yeah. communicate, communicate with your spouse what you need, because sometimes, like Bobby will come home and I'm like, I just he's like, do you need to go for a drive? I'm like, yes. <laughs> Do you, do you need to go pick up some, some fast food? That's right. Like for like, gets, I'm like, I just, today has been, you know, he comes home as quickly as possible. And I'm so thankful. But again, communicating our, our needs and, and even maybe saying to our spouses, like, like, I really need some alone time mm. when the kids go to bed to pray, to read, or maybe it's like, I need to go for a drive or I need to go out and eat like, for me, when we lived in California, it's like, man, I need a beach. Like, I need to go to the beach. I just need to, like, sit and hear God, you know. Um, and so I feel like we need to, again, you're learning more about yourself. You're kind of discovering, like, man, because we need to be sane, too, you guys. Like, we can't. <laughs> we do. And if especially, like, if you're an introvert and you need alone time. I mean, Grant, I'm an extrovert and I need alone time. I think with kids, they're, kids are constantly on you. You're like, I need space. All right. <laughs> um you need to, we just need to learn to know ourselves well and to know how to communicate that um, with our spouses, because that would be, that helps in turn, make us a better spouse and a better mom. Um, so, you know, just, just think, I think it's good to kind of think like, do I need time to read? Do I need time to be alone? Do I need, you know, how, again, maybe just sit down with a journal and like write down what it would look like, what, what you would love to do. Like, you know, I would love to read the Bible with my kids well, what time of day would be the best for that? You know, I would love to read the Bible by myself. What time, you know, just really kind of practically looking at the day and um, what we need. And again, to just allow us to have time with God. And then again, those moments fuel the, okay. So for me, I started memorizing scripture when I was in my early twenties and that has, I am really glad I did a lot of that work <laughs> early on because scripture constantly it's it, like it says in Colossians chapter three, it says, um, 
it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Mm. So we want the word of Christ to constantly dwell in us. And um, which means number one, we need to read the Bible, right? Like <laughs> we're, the Catholics are notoriously, we're notorious for like, you don't read scripture. Mm. Um, so number one, we need to crack that thing open. <laughs> number two, um, we need to memorize scripture. Yeah. And because then it can really dwell in us richly. And whether that's the Psalms, whether it's for me, I'm like, go to Romans 12, memorize that whole chapter. Cause that chapter is like pretty short, but it's like one of the best chapters in the Bible is Romans chapter 12. Just start memorizing there. Um, but that for me throughout the day helps because then I'm recalling scripture and um, it's in my head. So I don't know, write it on your mirror with like a, not a Sharpie, um, a, a dry erase marker. <laughs> <laughs> dry erase marker start writing scripture maybe on like your bathroom mirror for like a, a week a verse of the week um but like reading scripture with your kids you know letting the word of christ roll in you richly and man, my daughter she loves she's six she loves reading the, she loves reading stories the bible stories with me and we have a, a lot of different bibles that we use but we just got her her own who is it um it's like a it's like a youth bible Nice. And it's, it's the actual Bible. So there are parts of like, don't read that part yet. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not so great. Um, but, but it has like pictures. It's a Catholic youth Bible. And I'm trying to remember, it's not Ave Maria. I'm trying to remember who it is, but um, she loves reading it. So we sit down right now. I, I told her, I said, we're going to start with the gospels. So Matthew, let's start with Matthew. And we're reading like a chapter. We're trying to read a chapter night again. And we're not perfect. So some nights it doesn't, it doesn't happen, but those kind of things, just kind of figuring out like for yourself and for your kids, like how, what are the ways that we can bring God into the everyday and even in all the conversations, you know, I think we just have to kind of always, again, like what you said, like we're always thinking about God. It's a constant, it's a constant prayer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, Jackie, this has been such an encouraging conversation, even just for me personally, and like just a reminder of how God encounters us in the in the day to day, and he gives us exactly what we need and that it's okay that it's, it's going to be messy and it, it may not be as structured as um, our prayer lives may not be as structured or as neat as they were when we were in college or before family life begins, but like the God is, God is in all of that. And he wants us to, um, to rely on his mercy and his grace and, and to just fill up with that. So thank you so much for, for, yeah, just being real. With us. You're welcome. I mean, I tell my kids like after mass that they are not doing, if they didn't, if that mass they were, I, cause I try to tell them like, all right, guys, we're not at a playground. We're not at a jungle gym. <laughs> we're at church. Okay. So like if they were being you know like they were a jungle gym at church um I tell them in the car I just afterwards I say okay we can do better next week so even with myself because I still lose I still lose my temper sometimes I have to tell myself you can do better next time <laughs> you know you can do better next time your kid is throwing a chance like and I and I have to prep myself on, okay, so what can I do differently next time? Mm. You know, how can I respond again in a way that glorifies God and I don't lose and I don't have to apo apologize to my children, which I do apologize. And I think a parents, parents really should model apologizing yeah. to their children because mm. I have to ask, you know, I'll say to like my oldest daughter, like, I'm really sorry. I lost my temper. Will you forgive me? You know, and like, mom, I forgive you. And I'm teaching my kids how to say sorry to their siblings. Like, mm. sorry, I did this. I won't do it again. And then the brother or sister will say, I forgive you, you know, mm -hmm. but I have to model that too, because I, I lose, I, man, I have a, I grew up with a dad who would use some sailor words when he was putting up, I mean, I had a dad who was, had some anger, Irish temper. And so I have that little Irish temper and I have to learn how to, again, like ask for forgiveness. And then even in myself say, how can I do better next time? And like, Lord, how can I? Again, how, with your grace, how can I do better? Even in my feelings, yes. not just my actions yes. and my thoughts, yes. but even to the core of the feelings, which I can't control. How can Lord like just pour out your grace? So, like my feelings are very, you know, like evenly keeled when I see something happening. <laughs> A child is on the floor yelling and screaming. <laughs> how do I deal with that uh, right. in a prayerful way? 
<laughs> exactly. You know? Exactly. Oh, awesome. Well, I know we're, we're kind of coming to the end here, but Jackie, where can people find you online? What, what kind of projects do you have going on right now? Yeah. So, um, they, we have a website, just Jackie and but, um, if Bobby and I are, have, we're both hired as fellows at the Word of Fire Institute. Bobby was hired as a fellow of Parish Life and I was hired as a fellow of Marriage and Family. So I'm starting projects, um, doing courses for the Word on Fire Institute. And right now there's like 17,000 students at the Institute, but the, the, the people who are part of the Institute, they get all courses like on kind of everything, just like intellectual life, life as a Catholic, but also the spiritual life as a Catholic. And then I'm gonna start doing things with um, marriage formation and um, so spouse formation and then parent formation. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm not the expert on everything, right? Like I can only tell you what I've read, my experiences, but I also am going to be bringing in people who know much more than I do, much more wisdom. Like, um, and so I'm creating content for not only the Institute, but then, which is for the members, but then also for the public at large. And I will be, and I can't wait to do that. And for, again, to bring on people and interview people and have them share their wealth of wisdom for parents and spouses. Oh, that's so exciting. Well, hopefully we yeah. can, we'll connect with you again. I know you're right up the road in Dallas. So yeah. <laughs> um, but thank you again, just for your time and your ministry and your witness. Cause I think that it, yeah, you're the gift of authenticity and just the encouragement and yeah, that it's family life is messy. Motherhood is messy, but it's, it, God encounters us in, in all of that. So we really appreciate, really appreciate you. Oh, thanks for having me. And again, thank you yeah. guys for your ministry. And because again, you just want to know you're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. Yeah. It's like, right? Like we're all in this together. <laughs> yeah. Start dancing, Deanna. She's the dancer of the group. <laughs> right, you know, um, get some high school musical in there, you know, yes. but again, you want to feel like you're not alone. And again, we do need encouragement because the devil constantly wants you to feel like, again, you're, you're not good enough. You're failing at this. Uh, and yeah, the devil just wants to speak lies and God, you know, God wants to speak truth. And you guys are doing that even just through this podcast. Um, so thank you for your ministry. Thanks for having me, yeah, me on. So. Could we, could you lead us in a closing prayer? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your grace. God, there's, there's so many graces that people don't ask for. They forget to ask for. And I ask that you pour out all those graces upon us, those who are watching, those who are listening. God, help us to love, love you more every day. Give us the grace to die to self. Give us the grace to have joy, to have childlike wonder. Increase our faith, our humility. And Lord, give us that peace of heart that beautiful peace that, that we just so, so desperately long for and need. Pray for our families to be holy, our marriages to be holy, that we might be lights to the world. And Mama Mary, wrap us in your mantle. Pour, ask for all the graces for us. Say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, and now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 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 The Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs>